What a strange day that we've been ordered to stay at home. Now, with that in mind, it's an incredible thing. We have actually planned for this moment and recorded this message before the stay-at-home time, knowing that it was coming. So I want you to know that I'm thinking about this right now of us being at home. You're watching on your tablet, you're watching on your laptop, on your computer, maybe you've got it wired into Apple TV, on YouTube, on Facebook, whatever you're doing, our church's website, but it is a strange time. But you know what? God's been doing great things in this time. He's been moving in a powerful way, and we've got to trust that He's going to to continue to move, even though this Sunday we have to stay at home. Now, this is probably going to be the only time you're going to hear me say, stay at home on Sunday. But that's where we are right now in this very, very unusual time. But God is at work. God has been doing tremendous things, and we can trust Him even in this time. We've gone from four campuses to thousands of campuses now all across the nation, all across the world even. More people are watching online than we would have in the seats. It's incredible to see what God is doing. So I want you to tune in. I want you to get ready. I want you to be ready to look into God's Word to see what the Lord wants to do through this time. We're going to be in Psalm 46. That's where we were last week. So here on March 29th, As you're sitting in your house and we're in a stay-at-home time, I want you to get to Psalm 46, and we're going to look at some verses in it. Last week, I kicked us off, and I got us going with Psalm 46, and we started with verses 1 through 3 of Psalm 46, and we've got some great things in that. I want to recap just a few minutes, and then as we recap, then we'll jump into where we're going to be today to get some new truths from the Lord of what He wants to say to us. So look at Psalms 46, verse 1 through 3. This is where we are in our thousands of campuses all across the city and the state and the world right now. Let's look at Psalm 46, what we did last week. Here's what it says, verse 1. God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, though the waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. What he's saying there, he's saying, I want you to think about if if creation becomes uncreated, the mountains fall into the sea, the earth quakes, things seem to be going backwards. And that's what it seems like right now. It feels like creation, in a sense, is becoming uncreated, if you will. But he says, God is a refuge and a strength, a present help in times of trouble. And I gave you last week three names of God, three ways that we could have a look at God. Number one is Jesus is our refuge. He's our refuge of protection. We talked about that we want to trust in the truly certain things, not the uncertain things. Now, money, health, society, going to a a Rockets game or an Astros game or a Texans game, that all seemed like certainty, and now we know those things are actually uncertain. The true certainty is found in Jesus Christ. Therefore, He is our refuge. Remember we talked about taking refuge, that we have to take refuge and allow God to be our refuge, that we get where we can connect with Him in that way. That was the first thing we talked about. Trusting in certainty, not in uncertainty. Number two, we talked about Jesus is our strength, that he is our strength when our patience is weak. We're all getting very tired physically and emotionally. We're actually going through elements of trauma by going through this crisis. We're thinking about it all the time. We're worried about it all the time. Things are changing all the time. Now you have to work from home. You have to stay at home. It's a traumatic thing. And we have to realize that we need Jesus to be our strength because our patience is going to grow weak. And when our patience gets weak, we got to be on the lookout. Parental stress and childhood boredom are going to clash. They're going to come together. Or loneliness as a single adult. Maybe you're not around family a lot and you're getting lonely. Your patience is going to just become a weakness and you need the strength of Jesus Christ. So Jesus is a refuge. Jesus is our strength. And that thirdly and finally, we see that Jesus is our present help for peace and purpose. So Jesus is our refuge. Jesus is our strength. And Jesus is our present help 
in times of need. Our present help for peace and perfection. I asked you this question. Are you looking for your help in the news or are you looking for your help on your knees, praying to the Lord, spending time in prayer? So those are the three names of God that we went over last week, that He is our refuge, that He's our strength, and is our ever-present help. Now, I want us to look in Psalm 46 again. We're going to look at verses 4 through 9. We're going to see the results of this, some great things that God can do. So look in Psalm 46, verses 4 through 9, and let's look at this together. Here's what it says, verse 4. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God. The holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at the break of day. The nations are in a ru- uproar. The nations are in an uproar. Do you feel that right now? And kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice and the earth melts. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Come and see the mighty works of the Lord, the desolations that he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease in the ends of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear and burns the shields with fire. We see here there's some results that happen from really trusting in the Lord, that God is sovereign that he has stepped up, that he, or that he has lifted up, that God is the one on in the throne, enthroned in the heavens on his throne, that God is able to do his work. And so we say, okay, Lord, if the, the nations are roaring, you're going to take care of this. If, if the earth is giving way, you're going to take care of this. All of these things, we're going to trust in you. Now, he gets to something. In just a minute, I'm going to show you the verse of Scripture. How will we really discover these things? Well, these deep truths are discovered in stillness. These deep truths are discovered in stillness. The next verse of Scripture I'm going to show you is going to show you how we are to be still before the Lord. These deep truths are discovered in stillness. See, stillness is usually learned. It's cultivated over time. What's happened to us is stillness has been forced by a crisis. So this crisis has forced a stillness. So you're not at work like you usually are. You're not at school like you usually are. You're at home. You're not at church like you usually are. You're not running errands all over the place, going out to eat, going to sporting events. The stillness has been forced upon us. Typically, it is learned, but at this time, it's been forced. Now, here's what's going to happen. For those of us that have learned to be still, this is actually going to be a time where we're going to go, hey, I got some margin I've been looking for. I don't want anything to happen bad to anybody. We're not looking for that. But some margin is coming to my life that I'm going to be able to spend time with God. I'm going to be able to grow in this time of stillness. But for those of us that have not cultivated that, and we've grown accustomed to going 90 miles an hour, this is going to be an incredibly difficult time. Now, I've read a book. It was by Peter Kreft a while back. It was actually talking about death. But it gave four different stages. And here's what it said. Stranger, actually three, stranger, enemy, friend. Stranger, enemy, friend. What is stillness? What is peace? What is slowing down? Stranger at first. This is weird. It's enemy. We got to do something. I'm going crazy. We're we're having stir crazy. We got to make something happen. Let's do something. And then it becomes friend. And I want to tell you that this stillness, God has given you an opportunity and me an, an opportunity to rest, to let the water settle a bit, to let the rocks fall to the bottom of the jar, to let all the mud and silt come down a bit so that we can truly see clearly. Stillness is typically learned, but it's been forced upon us. Now, there's going to be some deep truths that we're going to be able to learn if we will sit back and really receive in this. This crisis is different. It's different. How is it different? We are used to, 
on the Gulf Coast going through crisis that have to do with weather. That's how we go through crisis. We go through a hurricane, we go through a flood. What happens is it comes in for a few days, we watch it on the radar, we see the red, the yellow, we see all the, the, the greens and blues coming with all the rain through the radar. We hear everybody say, hunker down, hunker down, and we see it. It comes through for a time, we watch it hover over where we are, and then it moves on, the sun comes out, we grab our shovels, we grab our gloves, and we go to work. This is different. Number one, it's invisible. We can't see it. We don't know if the person six feet from us has got coronavirus. We don't know what's going on. I was at a, a takeout restaurant, you know how you do the, the drive through type things? And everything was great. I was standing far away from people, and then they handed me the pen, and I looked at the pen on the table, and I thought, do I want to touch it? What a weird thought of this invisible enemy. Now, as it's coming through, there's something in us. We want to, well, what do we do? Should we grab our shovel? Should we go help mud out a house, muck out a house? What should we do? There's nothing to really do. There's stillness. The activity is actually being inactive. The help is actually not being helpful in those ways we would with a hurricane, of putting teams together, groups together, and then going out. So that stillness is going to have to yield in us some results that are deep. The deeper truths are discovered in stillness. Now, let me show you, show you the verse of Scripture. It's Psalm 46, verse 10. We've seen in one through three, he's a refuge, he's a strength, he's an ever-present help in times of trouble, even when the creation seems to be uncreated. Then there's going to be some things we're going to see the sovereignty of God. That's what we looked in verses four through nine. And then now we're going to see verses 10 and 11. Okay, so how do we respond? What does this look like in this response? Look at verses 10 and 11 in Psalm 46. Ready? You've heard this verse before. Be still. And know that I am God, and I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Verse 11, the Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Did you hear verse 10? Be still and know that I am God. Stillness deepens our hearts and our lives. Stillness deepens our hearts and our lives. The certainty in the midst of uncertainty comes when we get still before the Lord and we say, okay, God, I'm going to be still and I'm going to know that you are God. My activity gives me a false thought that I am God, that I'm the mover and shaker. I'm the one that's going to change things. But my stillness shows me that it's the Lord. He's the one. Think about what you do every night when you go to sleep. You're still. God's still moving. God's still on his throne. God's moving in daylight in one part of the world and nighttime in another part of the world. But we learn to trust the Lord by going to sleep every night and we have stillness. That's why when we worry, we have trouble sleeping because we're trying to actively get something solved in our mind on our bed when yet God's saying, be still and know that I'm God. And sleep illustrates stillness, which illustrates God is still in charge. And he's moving all night long. He's moving all night long. Stillness deepens our hearts and our lives. I have this little, this little box that I keep where I pray in my, my, um, my office here at the church. And it says this. Someone sent this to me. It just simply says, be still. And I have it by my prayer kneeler in my office where I can see it because I want to get to that prayer kneeler, and I just want to be still, be still. My wife's grandmother had a pillow that had this verse of Scripture on it. It said, be still and know that I am God. She had it in her house just to remind her not to worry. And so stillness deepens our relationship. Stillness deepens our hearts and our lives. Now, what can we take this in this aspect? Here's what stillness can do for you. Stillness before the Lord can do something great in your life because here's what it does. It allows you to understand what you're really going through. Do you remember we've been talking the past couple weeks about Psalm 42, verse 5? Why, oh my soul, are you downcast? Why, oh my soul, are you depressed? Why are you discouraged? 
And what it's saying is ask the question why. And stillness gives us an opportunity to ask the question why. Because here's what it's going to reveal in us. It's going to help us to discover what we're really feeling and really going through. As we sit back, and as we've been sitting for days now with this stay at home, and we've still got days left of this stay at home, it's going to allow us not to just get stir crazy, but to say, what do I really feel deep in here? Because my emotions have begun to settle in now at this point. So you've settled in, you've gone through some boredom, maybe gone through some conflict, you've been on the internet more than you thought you would be, you've watched more TV than you should watch, you've been on your phone considerably, but don't miss the moment of letting this stillness settle in because it will show us where we are. Are we angry? Are we hurt? Are we weary? Are we fearful? Where are we? This time, it's been kind of a fearful time. How many times have you touched your face and thought, "Uh uh-oh? How many times have you rubbed your eye and thought, "Uh uh-oh? How many times have you had a thought where you thought, I I don't want to get this. I'm afraid about getting this. Wait a minute, I just coughed. I just sneezed. Does this mean that, is this the beginning of this? I got a little bit of a headache. We are living in a fearful time and this stillness deepens our hearts and our lives by saying, Lord, we want to give it to you. When we're moving fast, we don't have time to really investigate what we feel, what we think, what we pray. It's not that we run one errand and that's the problem. It's that we run a hundred errands. It's not that we answer one email or we have one phone call or one text. It's a hundred emails. It's a hundred texts. And the busyness, chung, 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 it keeps going. And God says, be still and know that I am God. The second thing that it does is stillness deepens our relationship with God. Stillness deepens our relationship with God. So we want stillness to deepen our hearts and our lives, and we want it to deepen our relationship with God as well. Let me give you a few definitions of what this means, this stillness, this verse 9 and 10, because here we are at our stay at home, so we're learning to be still. We're getting bored. We're getting anxious, but we're having to be more still than we typically are. Here's a few things I want you to know about this this verse of Scripture. If you were to look at this verse of Scripture in the message, here's what it would say. Now, listen, this is really good. Be still and know that I am God. We're looking in the NIV, and I will be exalted among the nations. But here's what it says in the message. Step out of the traffic. Take a long, loving look at me, your high God, above politics and above everything. How perfect is that verse of Scripture from the message? Step out of the traffic. You have stepped out of the traffic of getting to work every day, getting to school every day. Take a long, loving look at me. That's what I'm trying to say. It deepens our relationship with God. A long look, love, long and loving look at me, your high God, above politics and all the things going on. And above everything, that's the message. That's not just, they didn't just make that uh, translation. This is from years ago. Listen to the New American Standard. Cease striving. Cease striving. Do you know out of the Ten Commandments, only once is the word holy used, and it's used when it says holy Sabbath. We talked about that in our 2020 series, keeping the Sabbath holy. Only time it's used holy in one of the Ten Commandments is with Sabbath. The longest chapter in the Torah is about the Sabbath. That's an amazing thought to think about that. One commentator puts it like this. While quietness is certainly helpful, the phrase means to stop frantic activity, to let down and to be still. What has happened in this is the government has basically said, we want you to have a Sabbath. We want you to have some more time. And as we've been going through days of it now, and we've gotten stir crazy numerous times, I want you to hear this verse. Be still and know that I am God. God wants to use this in your life and my life to deepen our relationship with Him. Yes, to stop the coronavirus from spreading. We want COVID-19 to end but to be able also to let God do something deep in us. Deep people are still people. 
Deep people are still people. They understand the ebb and the flow of life. They understand that you've got to, to engage and you have to withdraw. You have to make something happen. You got to pull back from making something happen. You got to go for it and you got to rest. And so now we've been given a forced rest, if you will. I know you're still working hard. I'm still working hard as well. I can promise you. But to be able to have a stillness before God. Kids, let me just speak to you for just a second. Students, if you as a student, if you as a kid, if you will just take a bit of this stillness, instead of just, I'm bored, I'm bored, I'm bored, screen, 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 and you'll read a book, you'll pick up an instrument you've played before and hadn't played in a while, you'll get a paintbrush, you'll get some, some uh, uh, pencils or crayons or, or whatever you want to draw with, and you'll spend some time thinking through things. If you'll rest, if you'll slow down, if you'll play a game with your family, you will find this will be a blessing to you. So students, learn this, cultivate this. Spend time with God as a student. Read Psalm 46. Go over your notes from this message. Be able to think through these things. Read Psalms. Just start in Psalm chapter 1 and read all the way through. God can use this in your life. Know that God is God over your pain. He's God over your pleasure. He's God over your activity. He's God over your rest. God can do great things if we in our stillness will know that he is God. Be still and know that I'm God. It's got two folds to it. One is, Lord, I know you're God, so you don't need me. I'm going to be still. The second is, Lord, I know in my stillness, when I get this word out, when I get my journal out, and I write a few notes down, and I open up the Moment Devotional. You can get that at our website for absolutely free and have it digitally. Text 41411, text MOMENT to that, and we'll send it to you. When we get things out like that and we spend those moments with God, there's a stillness. And as it said in the Old Testament, my voice was not in the earthquake, it was not in the storm, it was not in the fire. It was a small whisper. In these days that we've had to slow down and hopefully it's gone from stranger to enemy to now you're feeling it after these days as friend. So now here you are on March 29th and we're going to make it more days than this even. That we rest and we sit in the stillness. So as you look at your computer screen, as you watch on your laptop, as you're on YouTube, on Facebook, on the church website, if you got it on your TV right now, let the stillness of this Sabbath day, this Sunday, just settle in your heart for you to get to know God better. And then it says something really, really incredible. It says that, be still and know that I'm God and I will be exalted in all the nations. I will be exalted in all the nations. Now, here's what this means. Here's the word I want you to get. Stillness frees God to move. Stillness frees God to move. What we want is not just the deepening of our relationship. We want stillness to free God to move. Be still, cease striving, step out of the traffic, and know that I am God. And then the rest of the verse, look at the end of verse 10. It says at the end of verse 10, and I will be exalted among the nations, and I will be exalted among the earth. Here's what we want to happen. We want God to use this for good. We don't want this to be a tribal trial we just go through and we don't learn something from it. May God use this for good. May God take our uncertainty in our finances and give us certainty that God provides. More than oil, more than the stock market, more than the Dow Jones, God is the provider. So I want all these things that seemed certain weeks ago, they're uncertain. Money has wings and it flies away. I want the certainty of God to teach me something about the stillness before God so he could be exalted in the nations. For God to get glory in China, in Iran, in Italy, in the United States of America. I saw a video just recently of Italians leaning out their window, singing as one person played his guitar, and they sang in Italian. Here's what they sang. They sang, How Great Is Our God by Chris Tomlin. They were singing in the streets from these windows, How Great Is Our God, in the midst of Italy singing this. May God be exalted 
in the nations, in all of the earth. And that's what we need to be praying for. That God would use this for his good and his glory. Let's don't waste the trial. This is historic Literally, documentaries will be written about this or filmed about this. Books will be written about this. People will study about this in American history and world history. And let's make this a place of prayer so that be still and know that I am God and I will be exalted in all the nations, including the United States of America and all the earth. See, we want the stillness to free God to move. Let him move. You as a single adult, let him move. You as a family, let him move. In your marriage, let him move. As a student, let him move. In your online distance learning, let him move. Say, God, do something great from this. We want to see you powerfully move. Last week, I gave you a, a prayer that was written in, in my Bible uh, that I have at home that I read for my devotional time. It's a Chuck Swindoll Bible, and he had this prayer that was right there by 1 Peter chapter 5, and here's what he said, enable us to see the future as a challenge, not as a tragic problem, and see victory written across it because of the triumph of Jesus Christ. Let's see victory written across this because of the triumph of Jesus Christ. Be still and know that I am God and I will be exalted among the nations and among the earth, all over the earth. We said it last week, but I wanna say it again. Do you know that it is completely possible that literally the government could tell us to stay at home for these days and we could never spend time with God? You could stay at home for these days and never really spend time with God. Just TV, internet, videos, Netflix, Zoom calls, all these things, well and good. I've done it as well, I promise you. But let's be still and know that he is God so that God can use this in our life, in our hearts for him. Now let me tell you something about this passage of scripture and then we're gonna wrap up in just a minute. Psalm 46, you might not know this, but it's actually a song. It's a song. And so you can look at the very top in your Bible, Psalm 46 at the very top when it gives a little heading, it has for the director of music, and then it goes on and it talks about that, and it says it's a song. Now, let me tell you the people that it's written for that are singing it. It's for a Levitical choir, so a, a priestly choir of the Old Testament to be able to sing this song. And when they sing it, verses 7 and 11, if you look in your scripture, you'll notice this verse 7 and verse 11 are the same thing. And this is what it is. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. That's verse 7. And that's also verse 11. And you'll see that right there, they're the same thing. And then it says Selah right after it, which means pause. So they would say that. And then they would pause. It's the same thing. Now, here's what they would do in this. And we're going to do this together. This is going to be an interactive moment for us. They would recite this. They would sing these verses. And when they got to verse 7 and 11, the crowds, everybody else would respond with it. So it'd be that they would sing and then there'd be a response of verse 7 and verse 11. So we're going to read this together. We're going to say this out loud. This is verse 7 and verse 11. And I want you to hear this. I want you to hear this. And I want you to say it. If you're by yourself, say it out loud. If you're with a group of people, say it out loud. It better be under 10 or under whatever the rules are right now. But with your family, however it is, say it out loud together. So we're going to say it together and then I'm going to say a few things and then I'm going to just, we're going to kind of do a little repeat back and forth. I'm not going to sing, but we're going to be able to do this. So let's say this all together. You ready? Everybody right there where you are, your house, your condo, your apartment. Here we go. One, two, three. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. One more time. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Now let me put a different song to it and then we're gonna repeat it together. When I say it like this, when I point to it, and we're gonna say it together. But let me say something first and then you repeat it after me. 
COVID-19 is sweeping across our nation and our world. Say it with me. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. The stock market is not what it used to be. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. The economy is in a troublesome time. Say it with me. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. One last thing. We are at stay at home right now in the city of Houston. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. I want you to know this. We're going to make it. God's going to see us through. He's going to do an incredible thing. Let's be people of prayer. Let's let God do something great in us and through us. We've said it a hundred times, a thousand times. Who knows how many times in our church. Let him be a difference maker in us so he can be a difference maker through us. In these days, stay at home. Be still and know that he is God. And he will be exalted in all the nations. For the Lord Almighty is with us. And the God of Jacob is our fortress. I'm so glad that you've tuned in. I'm so glad that you're connected. Keep connected. But more importantly than anything, spend time with the Lord. And let this stillness bring a depth in you. Father, we come in Jesus' name and we thank you. We praise you and we trust you. May this time of stillness be an incredible time in our hearts. This March 29th is like no other one we've ever had. This is a different time than a hurricane or a flood. But Lord, we want you to be our refuge, our strength, and our ever-present help in times of trouble so that we could be still before you and allow you, God, to be exalted in our nation and in the rest of the world. Do something greater than we could imagine through this, both in us and around us. And we love you. And we pray this in the power of Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thanks for watching. To find out more about Houston's First, you can subscribe to our channel or you can go to houstonsfirst.org. 